Hi, and welcome to the Making the Media podcast. It's great to have you with us. My name's Craig Wilson. I'm your host for the next half hour or so of in-depth discussion behind the scenes of the media industry. Canada is where we're headed for this episode, specifically to talk about a new channel recently launched by the public broadcaster there, the CBC. CBC News Explorer is a fast channel that's free-to-air, advertising-funded TV, and these channels are seeing an explosion in growth in many countries now. Available on a variety of different platforms, it forms a key part of the organisation's strategy to be accessible to Canadians as widely as possible. It's one element of their programming output, which has moved from beginnings in radio and TV into podcasting, digital, online and social media. To talk about the channel and the wider strategic elements, we have two guests this week. Andre Lau is their Senior Director of Digital News Publishing and Streaming, overseeing their website, news app, social media content and more. She started her career at the CBC before moving to HuffPost Canada, and after a spell as editor-in-chief there, she returned to CBC in 2020. Michael Gruzik is the head of CBC News Studios, which is a development strategy and production team which supports content creators across all of their news platforms. An investigative current affairs and documentary producer, Michael was Director of News and Digital at Vice Canada and also Head of Network Programming for CBC News. Both have been instrumental in the launch and strategic direction of CBC News Explore, so they are the right people to talk to. And I began by asking Michael to outline the work of the CBC overall and how it has evolved in recent years. Well, CBC is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and obviously, you know, decades ago, it was modeled off of uh, off of the BBC. So um, there is uh, government funding that comes, although it's totally arm's length journalistically. Uh, although there are always um, uh, there's always questions and speculation about that in political circles, but I guarantee you, it is in, uh, totally arm's length and independent. Uh, and that independence of that journalism and, and objectivity as a public broadcaster is at the core of what we do. We started with radio services, moved into television services, and are now fully robust in 2023 with all of our digital services as well. Uh, because the changing nature of broadcasting is still true to what is in the actual act that we have to ad- adhere to and the Broadcasting Act in Canada as the public broadcaster, and that's to reflect all of Canada um, and be available to them. So so something that I think is interesting about CBC is we are available everywhere in Canada. We actually still maintain uh, traditional you know, towers for distribution across the country because we are the original broadcaster. So wherever you are, you can uh, get CBC radio. And in times of major emergencies, we are often the lifeline still uh, and the only one. Um, uh, and, and so we are everywhere locally and in, in, in countless um, uh, parts of the country. And it's a large country. So there are significant challenges that come with that. Uh, and we also maintain um, in uh, a 24-7 news channel, all of the typical um, nightly newscasts in local and network. Um, uh, we have the you know, most consumed news app and uh, uh, very successful digital uh, publishing that uh, Andre is, is a major part of. Uh, and now we're moving uh, aggressively into, or have already into areas, obviously, we're the number one brought, uh, podcaster in the country. Uh, and moving aggressively into streaming now. So the spirit of broadcasting the same in terms of our roots, pivoting into all these new places based on how people, what people need from us. Sure, Andre. Maybe coming to, to to talk to you for a little for a little bit now. So as, as Michael's kind of outlined, you know, the, the CBC a very, you know, traditional background, but obviously expanding now into other forms of media. How important is that? strategically to CBC, that the kind of digital outlets that you're talking about here, and then we'll come on to talk about CBC Explore, how does that fit into the strategy of what you're trying to do? I think it all comes down to accessibility. And by that, I mean, practically accessible, that we're reachable wherever people consume or looking for news. So um, the digital strategy is we have to be where people are. Um, And then also accessible in the sense of that the content is accessible and relevant and is representative of uh, people in Canada across the country and across the different 
regions, um, demographics and interests. So, you know, there's an editorial and there's also a technical um, aspect of this that all fits into the wider digital strategy. You know, I, I look at cost of living, which is a huge uh, concern, top of mind for everyone. And so how do we get different types of our reporting and our news that help people um, I consider that accessible. You know, what items on the grocery shelves haven't gone up with inflation? And how does that look across our different platforms? And I think that's where streaming fits in. We think about what format works best um, and really at the heart of it is our journalism and getting it to as many people as possible, whether they are used to coming to us at a certain time on a certain platform or whether they stumble upon us and uh, discover what CBC News is all about. Is is it really to do with reach as much as anything else, as opposed to specifically large audiences for individual programs? I, for sure, when we talk about new audiences, reach is absolutely part of it. Um, we can't reach people if they don't know where we are or what we're about. Um, and we have to be real, realistic about that. I know in years past, the focus has always been on O and O. Um, but we're saturated on who we know come to our owned and operated. So how do we reach out to make sure that our incredible journalism is being seen and discovered? And so reach has to be part of that. So obviously, you know, a couple of months ago, um, CBC Explore Channel has, has, has now been launched. Tell us a bit about that and about where it's available. So we uh, announced we were doing this earlier this year. We've been working on it for a while. Like Andre said, we are uh, focused uh, all the time in all of our conversations on audience behavior, which is changing more quickly than organizations often. And we know that the great work that we do in video and TV storytelling um, stays the same, is always evolving in terms of craft, but uh, where people can access it um, regardless of where we want people to be, their behavior is changing based on the technology they have, the kind of TV they just got for Christmas or uh, whatever kind of little box they have connected to the back of that TV or stick. Uh, so like every other organization, really media organization around the world right now, um, obviously we, we, know, we know this, we've got the facts, we've got the data and we know we need to be there. So we have launched our first streaming channel uh, which is additive. Uh, it's called CBC News Explore uh, because it is different from what we do on CBC News Network. It is different from what we're doing with our daily uh, supper hour and evening flagship newscast, The National, although The National appears on CBC News Explore. It's a destination for the best of our video journalism 24-7 a day. Uh, and, and, and what's nice about it is it's it's going to be, it already is in several uh, easy to access places, but it'll be in even more and more places just to meet people where they are, which is the conversation I've, everybody's having having uh, with our, our distribution, which is how do we go where they are, the audience is, as opposed to the, the constant uh, invitation to come to where we are. Uh, and everyone is in a lot of different places and that constantly changes. It'll change again in six months. I'm thinking about our conversation today and uh, I'm going into a meeting after this about our strategy, and one of the things I have to say is what we had, what we said a year ago is already different. Not because we were wrong, but because we're still listening. And 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 with Explore, we're right now launching on all of our owned and operated products, so it's right there in the news app, right at the top of story pages uh, in our own uh, uh, um, streaming. Uh, uh, player CBC Gem, which is also a, a home for all of our entertainment, comedy, sports. Uh, and we're on Roku, uh, coming soon to more connected TVs, pending a lot of different conversations. Uh, and, and, and the plan is to be where the audience is and have them discover us, whether they're uh, an audience that already has a loyal relationship with CBC News, or hopefully audiences that because they don't watch traditional television, uh, don't have a cable package. We see cord cutting and cord shaving accelerating in Canada uh, over the last several years. Uh, this is our way to still be there and be discoverable uh, and, and put a toehold in. The plan is to grow. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a fast channel. So we're free to air, you know, advertising supported yes. uh, TV. Is that also reflective of, you know, what some people have talked about is there's a bit of subscription fatigue going on at the moment um, as well. So is it important that it's free to air? We're also the public broadcaster, so it's important that it's free to air. 
you know, we are driven by giving Canadians what they need in terms of information and a relationship with their community. Um, you know, hey, weather's a big story in this country. So whether it's a major weather event uh, or making sense of complex things around the world in Ukraine or the US, what have you, uh, we our obligation is to be there. So uh, it, it's a non-starter for us. We are we are uh, we are free and available wherever you are, which is foundational. It goes back to the roots of of what we've always been. Andre, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about the the kind of content and the style of the channel. How does it differ from what you would get from, say, the main news channel? I mean, I think the biggest thing is there are pieces and reporting that uh, expand and and that don't have to fit in a minute 30 or two minutes. I think that is a big change, which then frees up our journalists to be a bit more creative in their storytelling, which then benefits the audience who, um, especially for audiences we're trying to attract who are not used to sitting at a 6 p.m. newscast. They're used to free-flowing different formats from TikTok to YouTube. You know, um, I think social storytelling influences a lot of what we're trying to do to break out of that mold of linear TV newscasts. Um, so the content itself uh, allows us to dig deeper, to experiment with different visual treatments. Um, it's a deeper dive. And I think it also allows us to show off a bit more of what we already do. You know, I mentioned those local newscasts. They do some incredible pieces. Um, and sometimes they're limited to the local newscast, a bit of video on demand, and then it kind of disappears. And, and this streaming channel allows us to expand it to a bigger audience, a different audience, and just leverage what we already have. Um, it's also different from our CBC News Network breaking news channel, because that is, you know, be a witness, be in the moment, we're there with you. Explore is a beautiful compliment, because then it's like, what does it mean? How does that look in my life? Um, how do we, how do you help me really understand what's happening? So it does it have a different almost like conversational style to it in comparison to what you would class as a kind of classic newscast. Absolutely. Um, I know Michael's going to probably want to jump in. I mean, one of our former hosts of The National, Andrew Chang, people would be used to seeing him in a suit behind a desk. He now anchors one of our um, shows on Explore called About That. And he's in a hoodie. He is walking around. He is at a whiteboard. And he is also exploring along with the audience. What does this mean? Um, and he doesn't have all the answers and it's not tightly scripted. So I think that is a, a big uh, contrast, Michael. We, yeah, I mean, we've gone pretty, because we know um, from having our successful uh, CBC News Network channel, what it looks like to do that kind of live and breaking news seated at a desk. We, we saw this assignment with Explore as, uh, as really something uh, to, to, to push our experimentation in storytelling and building on a lot of the innovation that's happening with storytelling across the country. So both the way that hosts, as Andre is referring to, are, are, are being more conversational, um, as well as uh, story formats. We have a new uh, program on Explore called Planet Wonder. Even the name of it says some, tells you something. Uh, it, it's a it's a very curio curiosity driven um, exploration with our our our, uh, our, our science uh, uh, meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff, where she's literally wandering in the woods or out at sea, ex exploring and explaining um, uh, the effects of climate change, in particular uh, in, in British Columbia, where uh, you have the the majesty of nature right at your doorstep, and you're able to to to, to visually capture so much. Uh, you can't do that in a traditional two-minute newscast or in an interview with an expert about the latest climate reports. And so this is a home where we can experiment with these new forms. We know how to do traditional, um, and traditional works very well for a lot of moments. There's, we're not uh, devaluing uh, that. We are, we are intentionally, we have four different kinds of content on the show, uh, on the channel, uh, daily, weekly playlists and big picture documentaries. And we're doing that on purpose because we know what it looks like sort of at the center of the field. And we want to go to the different corners of the field to experiment, to learn for our own internal reasons and also for audience behavior. And we're already seeing some uh, so, so, some, um, so, so, some interesting data coming out of Explore that tells us things that we wouldn't have learned had we started in, a, in the same uh, kind of traditional place uh, by, by doing things that are more conversational 
and, and, and another big thing with Explore is everything that's on the channel is available on demand on our own and operated platforms uh, and in clips on YouTube. So we're able to measure and see a lot of different things about the content than had we launched a streaming channel that was very similar to what we're already doing with our live and breaking news channel. You mentioned an important word there, um, Michael, which is experimentation. Um, and something else that popped into my mind as you were talking about the kind of stuff that you're doing is that there is a concern, I think, widely within the news business at the moment about news avoidance. You know, the, the agenda can be relentlessly grim um, for, for a whole variety of reasons. And things have been very difficult, of course, um, in recent years, as we all know. So is, is that part of the strategy as well about having a, a different approach to the way that news is told? The team behind our daily show uh, about that would answer that with a resounding yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I believe in their story meetings that they sit there and they they, they ask the, the questions through that lens of what do people want to know about today or this week? What are they really w wondering about? And I use the word wonder uh, very deliberately there. Um, you know, wonder, curiosity, um, uh, frustration, uh, you know, these are more emotional ways to look at the way audiences are processing the news than um, facts and information. Now, everything is based on journalistically sound facts and information. There is no opinion here. We're not playing around the edges. But the way that you get at something from a more conversational uh, and accessible um, um, storytelling lens of saying, let's go into the grocery store and figure out why chicken breast is costing $30 and cauliflower is costing $8, as opposed to interviewing an expert on uh, what's happening in, um, in the economy that's forcing it to be there. So it's, 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 a, it's a much more um, uh, boots on the ground, we're in it with you approach. As I was saying before, whether that's uh, big concepts like climate change, I mean, Johanna, in one of her opening episodes, is lying on the ground of a massive cedar tree on the north shore of, of uh, British, uh, uh, just north of Vancouver, uh, or Andrew walking through a grocery store, um, or, or before the holidays, he, they, they did a whole segment on, 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 on the trend away from al of drinking alcohol over the holidays, which is a big thing, I believe, in the, in the world right now. These are things people are thinking equally about... Uh, uh, you know, the concerning nature of where we at one year on from Ukraine, as they are about how they're feeling about their post holiday uh, economic situation or, or diet or an exercise. And so Explore really tries to carry both. We have the best of our world reporting, our domestic reporting, and things that are in your life that you're curious and wondering about, which is a big conversation for us in editorial meetings because of what we know the trends are around news fatigue. I don't think people have information fatigue, if I can speculate now, you didn't ask me to, uh, but but the tone of it is something that I think the entire industry is is wrestling with how that information is brought forward. And so it, Explore is playing around the edges of that. It's also the lens that Explore um, allows us to look at. We know news avoidance absolutely is the top of mind for us. In the daily grind of news, we tend to set out, here's the problem, here's what's emerged. And a lot less on, but what is actually happening to address it? Or it's not as grim as it is if you look at the bigger context. And so I think the lens that Explore takes really allows room for hope, which I think consumers are looking for. So that grocery store example we keep coming back to, yes, this is why inflation is happening. But look, here are things that haven't increased in inflation. Like it's still a life worth living, you know? It's not everything that's going to, to go down the pipes. Planet Wonder with Johanna looks at, you know, what, what things are happening on the positive side and who is doing it to help increase, you know, to counter the effects of climate change. It's not just setting out the problems, which I think it tends to be the what we gravitate towards in daily news. Yeah, Andre, you mentioned earlier on about, and, and Michael's spoken about this as well, about you know the, the sheer size of Canada. It's a very large country and a very diverse um, uh, country as well. How do you kind of work together within the various different newsrooms of coordinating the kind of coverage that you do? And then, I guess, from that maximising that if you are committing resources to do something, that that is then maximised across all the platforms. How does that work, really, just in a practical sense? Yeah, so... A big thing as we were working through this was we're not trying to create more. 
uh, a big goal of this was to leverage what's existing. And um, it's leveraging our network and local connections and giving it a bigger platform. So I might send this over to Michael to talk a little bit about This Week in Canada, which is one of our programs, um, that it looks exactly at that, at all the things happening across the country, but from the storytellers and our journalists in those communities. Yeah, so we have, we have an, a program on Explore called This Week in Canada, and it's a weekly program that has the best of local uh, storytelling that is uh, very universal in its nature. Normally in program development, which is what my team leads, you look at an opportunity with an audience or on a schedule. Um, this For the creation of this program, we actually broke that rule. We did it something very, very backwards, kind of breaks all the rules. We looked internally <laughs> and we said, we said, what do we have? What, what is our strength? And how could we uh, 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 repurpose that into something that had a program voice and tone and wider distribution? And we realized that across the country, there, uh, th there were rich examples of storytelling that were universal uh, about housing prices or construction or why is my city broken or potholes or, you know, these very local things that get, you know, under people's skin that everyone can relate to around the world. Uh, and and how do we put it into a format? So we created this program this week in Canada. And, and as a result, those local stories are being seen more simply because we have a program shell around it, uh, which then connects into the wider distribution that's happening with Explore and YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're, we are playing from a craft experimentation point of view, but we're also looking at systems experimentation of just new ways of looking at how we amortize what's already sitting there um, but we we got we we probably got stuck. You can get rusty a little bit, uh, thinking that the audience is just going to keep coming to it. You have to keep changing the way that you. It's like the store window of your business. You have to keep changing it. In addition to that program, we also have playlists. We have a great programming team that again looks at all the great content that's created across our news division and themes it. So cost of living is one because I think it. You know, I'm sitting here in Toronto, but I used to live in New Brunswick and British Columbia, other different regions in Canada. And it gives me a bigger lens as to what else is happening in terms of, let's say, cost of living or housing. Um, and it connects me to the rest of the country. So we also have playlists that are thematic that are looking at um, things affecting people's lives in Canada. Yeah, I mean, Michael, the follow up question I was going to ask around around what you were talking about there is I'm guessing also from a production perspective, efficiency is really important. You know, we see across the, across the world, you know, most content providers, content creators, they're not getting more money to go and create stuff. There's an expectation to do more with what you have. So I'm guessing that efficiency play is also something that's, that's kind of crucial across to get the resources to then create the content and then have these outlets to generate it means that you're creating more content for more outlets and that and therefore reflects back in a more efficient organization. You know, I, I, I love your question because... You know, you know, we started this interview saying, well, wh what do you do and what's your job? And, and anyone in this business can't really answer that accurately, because as I listen to your question, I realize a lot of my job is piecing together resources and funding. Uh, it's not a sexy thing to say, but it's the truth. And and, uh, and 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 with this project, we've really sat back and said, where is their work? Where is their funding? Where is their talent? Where are their resources? Where is there already a control room or a camera or a, or a great editor? Or, or where is it already happening? Uh, and, and, and by sort of standing up on the hill, looking down on the village, we were able to see things. We could see some patterns and we're like under Andre said with playlists or this week in Canada, uh, we were able to find those opportunities. Uh, our, our, what, you know, one of the series we've mentioned a couple of times, our climate series is actually fairly low cost because we were able to do it that way. We just said, where is there a resource? Uh, where is there one extra shift of an editor and why they're already gathering something here, et cetera. And what's nice about Explore is that it already is, and I believe will increase as an engine that then feeds back into the uh, traditional uh, formats. So a lot of those stories will now end up on supper hours, will end up on the um, uh, local social feeds uh, and, uh, and or YouTube. Uh, so all the places that they already were. So it hopefully is meant, since this is a podcast with the media, I can be philosophical. It's meant to be uh, circular in terms of its content generation. 
as opposed to standing up on the side as a separate new uh, output that doesn't feed back into the larger system. And we have no choice but to do that. We, we don't have some separate massive pocket of money that we've tapped into. So it has been uh, a real act of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of kind of recycling to, to recycling with purpose to ensure that the distribution happens, but everyone is still receiving the, 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 the content that they need every day to fill their traditional uh, television programs. And I would guess that the fact that it's on all the various different platforms also gives you amounts of data. And how important is that kind of data to then analyze against what you're doing, the success of it, the kind of stories that you're doing as well? Is, is that, again, part of the, st the strategy to give you more data to then utilize? Yes, yes, and yes. I think that everybody in, in, is you're looking at streaming. And again, I would apply streaming to audio as well, because I'm also working on a lot of our podcasting work where we have a lot more data in podcasting because we've been around for a few years or the data that we obviously have uh, in, in, in digital publishing, which Andre is very close to. Uh, so it's early days with Explore, but we're already looking at that carefully. And it's incumbent upon us to be... Um, paying attention to it and we will constantly change it's it's a it's a it's a level of data that is more complicated i'll say that because it's coming from a variety of different places uh, so we I, I wouldn't say we have a full picture yet because it's a lot of smaller data sources uh, as opposed to in traditional where you've got one large data source and you can see a trend easily so we're figuring there's a lot of learning that's happening there but i think everybody in it who, who has access to this data uh, is going to be able to respond in much um, faster uh, uh, and, and specific ways because we're 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 just going to have more information than the typical um, uh, you know um, average minute audience that in traditional broadcasting that we've looked at with our overnights. I, I just wanted to add the data is also key to our internal strategy of change management um, because you know this is a big place and this is a new thing. Um, and some people aren't convinced or can't really wrap their heads around it. And so you, you sort of dig through the emotion and um, the feelings and, and just the fear. Um, and that's where data comes in. You can't argue data. It's black and white. You know, it points us to the direction. It connects us to the strategy, which then allows us to all talk openly about what the tactics are and why we're making these choices and why this is a priority. So I think that's another reason the data out of all of this is so important. So um, a question to, to, to both of you, Andre, maybe come to you first. So my question here is about how do you see the channel evolving? You know, you've, you've been on air only for you know, a couple of months now or maybe six, seven weeks, um, I guess. You know, how are things going so far and, and how do you see it developing? So uh, Andre, I'll ask you that one first. Woo, so many things. Um, we'd love to see what kind of other programming can come out of it. How can we refine those playlists and leverage our, our local content? Um, what can we do to make things easier for the audience in terms of graphics or um, more of a, a banner to help connect the daily news with the sort of more explanatory journalism we're doing? Um, and then I think there's a lot of learnings from this channel to direct what the company as a whole might do for the future. Um, you know, we have colleagues in sports and entertainment uh, who are obviously very keen to find out what they can do with it. Uh, local news, for sure, is uh, something we're looking very deeply at. You know, in the U.S., I know there's quite a few local streaming st uh, channels. So I think those are types of areas. Oh, oh the same. Uh, you, you know, Canada is a complex uh, country based on its geog geography and the different news needs that people have. And, 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 and local is the first you know the, the first thing that there was a snowstorm in Toronto today, and uh, what did I do as a be as a as a as a as a news user is, I was just focused on weather, 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 weather. It's very basic, and so how do we uh, chart the course for the future that's meeting the needs of people in different places? If you're waking up to a snowstorm in one place, but in another city, it's a very different issue that's happening. So those are things that we're looking at through um, through technology and editorial and data conversations around the scalability of streaming. Uh, and again, I, I'm not saying anything that's too inside baseball here because we we see uh, this happening in, in in many other markets. 
in, 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 with the growth in local news. So I think you can watch for us to continue to have that conversation uh, so that we really are being what our promise to the audience is, is, which is to be there for them wherever they need us to be. Uh, and, 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 and local is going to continue to be a major part of that with, 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 with streaming and where we iterate from here with Explore. So, so Michael and Andy, uh, really great to, 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 to talk to you and to get the chance to find out a bit more about CBC and specifically CBC Explore. Um, there is one question which I ask everyone in the podcast, so I'm going to ask it to, to both of you. So, so Michael, I'll come to you first. What is it, if anything, that keeps you up at night? Well, I'm the father of two teenage daughters, so I, can I stop there? Uh, <laughs> they're, they're great. Uh, well, they, they actually don't keep me up at night. I, I would say... Uh, uh, time, the, the the tension point between how quickly audience behavior changes and how quickly we as an organization can pivot to be what they need. Uh, you know, my 75 year old mother, I'm just questioning in my head how, exactly how old she is. If she's 74 and she hears this, I, I'm just doing a double take. But um, her behavior is incredibly contemporary. Yes, she watches traditional TV, but she has um, a connected television. She listens to podcasts. Her rate of change is so fast. Uh, and it's faster for her at her age than we're sometimes able to be in the organization. And that's just the nature of change management, you know, culture management. Um, and so I worry a lot about meeting the needs of everyone from my 15 year old to 75 year old in my life. Uh, as quickly as we can, because they are sophisticated, audiences are smart, uh, and they are moving uh, faster than sometimes we're able to inside. And that's literally my 3 a.m. wake up. <laughs> and, and Andre, the same question to you. What keeps you, if anything, what keeps you up at night? I think mine is more internal. Um, it's sustainability. Um, we have, so technically we have products and technology that are hitting lifespans can we evolve fast enough to sustain what we want to do and that to me connects with the sustainability of our people um you know are, are there frictions and barriers technically that lend to frustration and 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 sort of barriers to being able to innovate and to try new things and then just that then leads to just the exhaustion that we know journalists are just living through constantly that news cycle the demands the pace of change um, yeah, I wake up a lot in the middle of the night. So sustainability, I think, is my answer. Um, and just making sure our people are engaged and connected and stay in our industry. Fascinating thoughts from both Andre and Michael. And it will be interesting to see how CBC News Explore develops. As always, let us know your thoughts through the Avid social channels, or you can find me on both Twitter and Instagram as CraigAW1969. Or, of course, you can email us at makingthemedia at avid.com. Now, don't forget to share the podcast and to subscribe on your platform of choice to get notified when new episodes are out. Check out the show notes where you can find links to a recent podcast episode with Michael Jarmy, the Director of News and Current Affairs at the UK broadcaster ITV, and also a link to a recent Avid webinar highlighting some of our new collaborative news solutions. That's all for this episode. Thanks to our producer, Matt Diggs. Thanks again to Andre and Michael. But most of all, thanks to you for listening. My name is Craig Wilson. Join us again soon for the next episode of the Making the Media podcast.